It's a knowledge of sin. In the third chapter of Romans, in the 20th verse, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth and law, and that's not what I want. That's 2.20. Let's go to 3.20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall be no flesh justified in his sight, for the law is the knowledge of sin. So the knowledge of good and evil is what? It's the law. The knowledge of good and evil is the law. Adam chose the law. In Romans 7.12, since we're there, look at Romans 7.12. Wherefore the law is holy, the commandment holy, and just and good. Now let me ask you a question, and, and think before you answer it. Is this holy? Is this book, are these pages, is this ink holy? No. But is the life that is in this book holy? Yes. So if God tells me that the commandment and the law is holy, then he's ascribing something to that law that's more than something written on stone or stone itself. He's saying to you and I that law is God. As the Word made flesh, it is God. If the law is holy, then what we're looking at is that garden was the pinnacle or the throne of holiness. Everything in that garden was holy. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil was in that garden. So here's what it is. Law is the, the law is the nature of God. I'm talking about the divine nature of God. That's what the law is. Life is the nature of God imparted to man. And the fact, here's what grace is. The law is the nature of God, the divine nature of God, spoken of again in 2 Peter 1, the divine partake of the divine nature. The law is the divine nature. Life is the divine nature of God imparted into man. Grace is the fact that that life imparted into man, allowed its course, will bring the life of God through that vessel. Grace is God living through you His life. The life of God will always be true to its character. The life of God will never make the wrong choice. The life of God will always do that which is the best interest of the purpose of God. If you eat the life of God, you will keep the law. Now there was a change that took place that changed the tree in this, that changed the tree that pertains to Adam. You remember God told Adam, of every tree you may eat but that one, don't eat of that one. Well, God wasn't doing that because He was trying to withhold anything good. He was telling him that because that tree does not pertain to Adam at that time. Everything else belongs to you because you're in the image of God, the Son of God. Uh, you are a God, small g. It all belongs to you but that very one. Don't eat of that one. Why? First Timothy 1.9 said the law doesn't belong to a righteous man. It said the law is the property of the manslayers. Of, and let's read it. 1 Timothy 1.9 1 Timothy 1.9 Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and the disobedient for the ungodly, for the sinners, for the unholy, profane, for the murderers, for the 
fathers and uh, and, and of fathers and murderers, of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. He said, Adam, don't eat of that tree because that tree is not for you. It doesn't pertain to you. But after he eats of that tree, it's the only tree left in the garden that does pertain to him now. Because it's the only means God has of communing or the only way that God has of ministering glory to Adam is now in that tree which is the law, which is which is the ministration of death, condemnation and the ministration of death, which is why God said if you eat of that tree you will die. Adam becomes natural. Because he becomes natural, he now, along with everything else in creation, is going to recreate according to the law of creation. And in Genesis, the fifth chapter and the third verse, we read something very significant. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness. Man has become a natural race and separated from the life of God. And the, uh, the results of that are immediate. You know these things, but I'm going to tell you anyway for those that may not. In Genesis, the fourth chapter. In Genesis, the fourth chapter and the third verse, it says, And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had no respect not respect and Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell and the Lord said unto Cain why art thou wroth and why is thy countenance falling if thou doest well thou shalt shalt thou not be accepted if thou doest not well sin lieth at the door and unto thee shall be his desire and thou shalt rule over him this is the same words that God spoke to Eve when he said unto the man shall be your desire in other words it was saying that there is going to be a, a law in you that Paul's talking about in the seventh chapter of Romans. It said, I want to do good, but there's a law present in me that wars against the law of my mind and brings me into the bondage of sin. He's saying, you do this, and the bondage of sin will set in on you. Romans 6.16, 6, it said, who you serve will take you where he's going. Adam, in, in, in the choice that he made, he brought them under law, and the evidence of that is immediate, because you can read from what we just hit, read here, there had to be something here that was more than a discretionary choice of man. Here are these two men that meet. Evidently, then they were coming at the same time. They meet, so evidently they're coming at the same to the same place. It said that they were both met at the same time and same place, bringing an offering. Evidently, they came with the same purpose. And it said that one of them offering is accepted, and the other one's offering is not accepted. And we're told very clearly, it's not because of ignorance that your offering is not accepted. You knew better. You knew what to bring. In other words, it's not discretionary. It is something that God has set forth. It is the law in action. So immediately, the effect of what Adam did is seen, and we see that the law is instituted, and the ministration of condemnation uh, it, it comes forth uh, through the, 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 the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, what am I saying to you? The Bible said very clearly in Hebrews, which we read in Hebrews 9, it said that, that all of these sacrifices that, the, that brought in under, under the law, of Mo, not the law of God, but the law of Moses, the, the law that God gave Moses, all of these sacrifices and offerings, he said they have, that they have no effect on anything. They are simply something that's been instituted until the time of Reformation. This is the law that passes away, not the law of God, because the law of God is God. It is this law that is in place until Christ and life is once again reintroduced and reinstated. So what we're looking at then is, is, is we're looking at a time when none of these sacrifices would do the job. And we were told in Galatians that but we were kept by the law, kept there and, and, and until uh, the fullness of time would come and that Christ would come forth. The law was and is the response.